Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, a Western. Um, I'm going to talk about Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. So, as you may have seen on the channel, this was book 100 for me in my 100 book challenge. Um, I thought I'd go out on a mammoth um, and I very much enjoyed it. Um, and I have to say, I don't think I have read any book yet or talked about any book on the channel yet that's had as much interest from people as this one. So, so many people commented um, when I mentioned this in videos and things, um, how much they liked this book um, and wanted to know what I thought about it. So I wasn't intending on doing a review of it because it doesn't necessarily fit with the theme of the channel. But so many people were interested in it. I thought that I would. Um, so, yes, let's talk about Lonesome Dove. So, published, I think, in 1980. I'm going to double check that now. Terribly unprofessional. 1985. So, published in 1985. And it's, a, you know, a whopping book. Uh, it's nearly a 1,000 pages. So, it's 945 pages, this edition, anyway. Um, and I think probably quite an important book. So, it's not a book I mentioned when I did my... Um, what was it? I can't remember what it was now. 30, 30 Most Influential Popular novels of the last 50 years or whatever it was um i didn't mention this because i hadn't read it but i think it probably should be counted in that list um because i think it it probably one of those books that's on the a kind of tipping point of the of the switch from westerns being um more what's the word i'm looking for more kind of pulpy almost more pure entertainment um into something more serious um and epic feeling and historical so i guess westerns as history novels rather than westerns as adventures um and it definitely has that feel of you know being about the history of a country and i suspect that's why it's such a a popular book in the us and indeed why it won the pulitzer prize for fiction which it did um so as always i don't tend to talk too much about plots um on my in my review videos and i certainly wait for this one but it, essentially it's about two guys um called gus and call who were um kind of captains in the texas rangers um and were you know in, in texas um defending settlers against um indigenous american attacks um and against attacks from over the border in mexico um and now that that kind of period of of unsettled conflict if you like um, has finished they've settled down and they're running a like a livery stable where they trade horses and and you know that kind of thing um, and they've got a gang of kind of guys who work with them um, in the town of Lantern Dove which is where the book starts um, and what kind of kicks the story off is an old comrade of theirs um, comes back into town um, and kind of piques their interest with the wider world should we say um, and, you know, from there, the story develops. And it's really a, you know, definitely a very grand story. It sees them, and I don't think this is a spoiler, but it sees them, you know, traverse a lot of America um, through the course of the book. Um, and because of their, um, you know, their history as having been part of the Texas Rangers, there is that sense of this being part of the broader history of America as well. So, so whilst it is definitely a Western, and you know, it's got all the things you would expect in a Western. It's got cowboys, it's got sheriffs, it's got stampedes, it's got saloons and, you know, with gamblers and whores and things like that. Um, the, the actual story feels like it could be transplanted to any any one of a number of different locations or historical situations or time periods or whatever, in that it's a story about... Um, about friendship and love and you know the relationships between people and particularly the relationships between men and women um, and I think what makes it such a successful book um, and so I did this was a buddy read for me with Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl and one of the things we've been chatting about is the sense or the, the feeling with this book that there's a bit of everything in it it's it's really one of those books that covers the whole range of of human existence so that you know there's there's a lot of comedy it's a much funnier book than i was expecting there's some very amusing dialogue and things like that there's also a ton of tragedy um there's adventure um there's some you know some some really quite disturbing distressing scenes um you know there's all sorts going on here coming of age stories um you know stories about fathers and sons stories about husbands and wives it's a really rich 
tapestry of stuff woven together to make this book. And, and whilst it is, you know, it's a big book. And if I was being, I think there's two things um, I would potentially criticise it for. And I'll, I'll come back to the second one. The first one is, does it really need to be 950 odd pages? I think arguably it does. I, you know, I could see, I could, I could see a shorter version of it that kept most of what it's got. But it's one of those books that's so grand in its scope and its ambition that it feels appropriate that it's huge. Um, and it's so readable as well. So, I mean, that's what, uh, one of the things I'd say about it. And I think it's that, that mix of all the different things that are in it, like I said, means that it is incredibly readable. It's really gripping. His prose style is quite simple, um, but very, very readable. Um, and it did make me want to read more by him. So there's a few other books um, that he's written with the same characters in, but he obviously he wrote a ton of other stuff as well, which is very well thought of. Um, so, yeah, there's 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 something different on every page almost in this book and that really does keep you keep you turning those pages and keep you interested in it um it's um it's a very human book in many ways as i say it, you know it really does feel like it's about the whole of human existence um and the friendship between those two main characters gus and call is is really um really moving um in and and really but credible and believable as well. So a lot of the time they they appear not to really like each other very much at all. They kind of rub up against each other the wrong way all the way through the book. And they're very different characters. Um, Call is very taciturn and serious. Um, and Gus is, is much more um, talkative and, you know, mucks about a lot and stuff like that. Um, one thing that really impressed me about it as well, actually, is that the female characters are as three-dimensional and rich as the male characters. I was kind of worried going into it, it being a Western, um, you know, and, and written by a man, that it would focus very much on the male experience of things. And there's certainly more male characters than female characters. Um, but there's at least three female characters who are absolutely fascinating. Um, so really well written. So um, Laurie is probably the, the main one. Um, who's a, um, a prostitute in Lonesome Dove who ends up um, kind of joining up with um, Gus and Call and, and the rest of their gang. Um, and her outlook on life is, is fascinating. The journey, you know, the, the journey she goes through throughout the book is fascinating. And she's just a, a really believable character. Her reaction to things that happen felt felt very real and believable to me and presumably the other female characters are fantastic too um and um another thing that that jolene and i've been talking about is one of the real strengths of this book is is it's the way it talks about male female relationships um and one of the things that's often used for comic effect in the book is the fact that um this is a society if you like where there is a huge imbalance between men and women purely in terms of volume. So there are far more men around than there are women. And a lot of the men just hang around with men all the time, um, you know, like working on the ranch or whatever, so that when they actually meet a woman, they have no idea how to behave and get incredibly awkward. There's a lot of very funny scenes that revolve around that. Um, but there's also loads of stuff about, you know, about about romance and about how... Um, how 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 many misunderstandings and things like that they can be in romantic relationships um and how people can um you know can can build up their own perception of a relationship which is completely different from the perception of the other person in the relationship so he he really does a fantastic job of of talking about that now so i've as i've said i really enjoyed it um i gave it four stars and there's probably one thing that stopped me giving it five stars um, and I am, you know, I'm bearing in mind this was written in 1985, so it's not a new book by any means, although 1985 is still pretty recent. The thing I think knocked it down a little bit for me um, is the representation of people of colour in the book. So there are characters who aren't white in the book. So you get Indigenous American characters. Um, there's one um, black character who's fairly prominent, Dietz. Um, who's like one of the one of the crew that work with Gus and Cole, um, and then there are some Mexican characters as well. So um, the, the, they end up having two different cooks who work with them in this book, both of whom are Mexican. Um, the thing that um, disappointed me a bit about the representation of those characters is so let's talk about 
Dietz and the Mexican characters first. They're in it quite a lot. You know, they get a good amount of screen time, if you like, within the book. But what you don't get um, is the... He doesn't dig into their minds the way he does with most of the white characters. Um, so Dietz in particular, you hear very little about his inner thoughts, whereas with most of the other characters, even you know some of the relatively minor ones, you, you do get scenes where you see things from their perspective. With Dietz, you really do not get that at all. It's all, the you know, Gus and Call in particular, their perception of what's happening to Dietz. Um, now, he himself is, you know, quite a strong character. Um, you know, he's, he's totally, you know, he's really well respected by the rest of the men. Um, but yeah, it felt to me like there was something a bit lacking there. And it's similar with the, with the Mexican characters in the book. They are, um, you know, you hear about them from the outside rather than the inside. So that was a bit disappointing. Um, and then similar, well, not similarly, the indigenous American characters are mostly demonised, basically. So um, there are two main um, characters, both of whom are, you know, fierce, ruthless, brutal um, kind of, you know, Native American chiefs. Um, who uh, one of whom in particular Blue Duck does some horrific things in the book and is utterly merciless and um, you know the, the author clearly has no sympathy for him and, and the reader is not expected to either um, and that's fine you know it's fine to have villains um, in a book but there are no um, sympathetic indigenous American characters to to counterbalance that and all, and indeed all of the all of the other characters that are in it barely get named at all so you know blue duck has these these other um you know native americans who hang around with him and who are part of his gang if you like um but they are just talked about as a group of people never as individuals um so again i, I was expecting more than that i was expecting for the book to have a bit more sympathy um for the indigenous american characters and and there are some scenes where you know people so like gus and call maybe reflect on the fact that they are you know the, the, the whites are the invaders here um but there was a, a lack of subtlety um that surprised me i was expecting a bit more depth and richness there um and you know i've been reading the edge books recently and you know i talk about one of those every week um you know i've got i've got a couple of them here um, so I've got the final shot and Vengeance Valley here. So these are, you know, my, my I guess my current uh, yardstick, if you like, for westerns. Um, now the Edge books are definitely nowhere near as good as Lonesome Dove. Lonesome Dove, you know, I think you could argue is in many ways a masterpiece. The Edge books are fun pulp novels, um, but I actually think the treatment of race in the Edge books is more interesting and and a bit more nuanced. Um, he is. You know, Gilman, the author of the Ed book, seems much more aware of the fact that um, an Edge as a character is much more sympathetic to the plight of, of the Native American characters. Um, and, and those characters have a bit more depth and richness to them. Um, you know, even if the, the, the bar for depth and richness in the Edge books is, is not set particularly high, they are, you know, often on a par with the white characters, which is, I, I didn't think was the, the case in Lights of Duck. Um, so yeah um you know that's my thoughts on the book i did really enjoy it you know there's no way um you know i could have read a 900 plus page book if i didn't really enjoy it um but yeah as i say a little bit disappointed by that one thing but other than that it's a fantastic book i'm definitely looking forward to reading the other books in the series um i know tons of people um you know who subscribe to the channel um have read this book and, and really like it so do let me know um you know more about your thoughts um in the comments below um, but yeah, as always, hope everyone's safe and well. Hope you're really good stuff and I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.